At the dawn of this epoch of mankind's history, three human civilizations began to coalesce. Located in what is today Pakistan and western India, the Indus River Valley was home to one of these emerging civilizations. Another group sprang up in North Africa along the Nile River, what we know today as the mysterious civilization of ancient Egypt. But the earliest of the three civilizations, which historians and archaeologists believe came into existence as early as 5500 BC, were the people of Sumer. The Sumerians lived in the southern region of Mesopotamia, which we know as modern-day southern Iraq. Their settlements were along the valleys of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Eventually, Sumer was conquered by the neighboring Akkadians, who were led by their king, Sargon of Akkad. Sargon's conquest created the first major human empire known as the Akkadian Empire, which reached the peak of its strength between 2400 to 2200 BC. Its capital was called Akkad, although the exact location of Akkad remains a mystery. When the Akkadian Empire fell, it splintered into two major Akkadian-speaking nations, the northern nation of Assyria, and a few hundred years later, the southern nation of Babylonia. Genesis chapter 10 refers to the king of Babylon, a man named Nimrod, whose kingdom included the fallen capital city of Akkad. It is said that Nimrod was an enemy of the young Abraham and tried to have the boy killed as a human sacrifice, which is the primary reason that Abraham fled the land and began making his way toward the land of Canaan. In fact, nearly all of the events discussed in the Old Testament transpired against a backdrop of ongoing geopolitical conflicts between the major civilizations of Assyria, Babylonia, and Egypt. In these first millennia of mankind's development, the spark of knowledge lit the wicks of curiosity and intellectual exploration in the minds of men. Some men used the pursuit of knowledge to develop skills and trades. Some sought knowledge to create things of beauty, including art and culture, and even systems of religious faith to help the people connect spiritually to deity. But there were also men who realized that the accumulation of knowledge could also lead to the acquisition of power. Just as we know that knowledge is power, we also know that the accumulation of power often corrupts those who accumulate too much of it. And so it was in these earliest of civilizations that corrupted men filled with ambitious lust for power began to exert their control over other men. This included efforts to obtain dominance over spiritual traditions. If one could control another man's religion, one could control the man himself, and not just one man, but masses of them at a time. The power masters used their knowledge to take control of religious hierarchies, using puppet priests to introduce nefarious doctrines and systems of control through which the power masters could enslave the minds of the ignorant acolytes. It was in the midst of this corruption of spiritual traditions that the first mystery schools were created. The purpose of some of these secret schools was to carry on the true spiritual teachings called Gnosis by the Greeks, and to protect this knowledge from corruption by the power masters. But other ancient mystery cults were developed for the purpose of hiding the greater truths from the masses, consolidating the sacred knowledge into the hands of the small group of intellectual elites who would use these sacred truths for their own benefit. The esoteric knowledge would be closely guarded, passed from one privileged man to the next through a protective system of passwords, hand grips, signs, tokens, and symbols, and even blood oaths that would result in death for anyone foolish enough to reveal the knowledge to the uninitiated. There is much disagreement over the origins of these hidden teachings. Some say that this sacred knowledge originated at the time of Adam and that it had been preserved through Noah 
and passed down through his descendants after the Great Flood, who went on to develop the post-Diluvian civilizations. Others claim that the sacred knowledge taught in the ancient mystery schools existed among past civilizations, such as the Atlanteans and Lemurians, that had been wiped out by global cataclysms. Proponents of this theory point to the pyramid texts of Egypt, written around 3000 BC, which contain writings of a much more ancient people, possibly the Atlanteans. Some have suggested that the god of ancient Egypt, Osiris, was actually a visitor from another world. They say that because Osiris came from an advanced extraterrestrial civilization, his knowledge and seemingly supernatural powers were perceived as godlike by the primitive people, and that the first Egyptian mystery schools were founded around that advanced knowledge that Osiris taught them. But regardless of their origins, the esoteric knowledge taught by these cults was always consolidated into the hands of a relatively small faction of men. But in time, the various esoteric teachings of these most ancient mystery schools began to pollinate other cultures, like a dandelion spreading its seed on the wind. More cults, based upon these original ancient mysteries, began to spring up throughout the known world. Ancient Mesopotamia was dotted with such cults. They were prominent within the ancient Greek Empire, which brimmed with hermetic cults. It was believed that Hermes was the messenger of the gods and the Greek equivalent of the ancient Egyptian god Thoth. The links between Egypt's mystery schools and those of the Greeks are manifold. These esoteric teachings were then adopted by the burgeoning empire of the Romans, which spread the mysteries even further throughout the world. Some of these Roman mystery cults were transformed into social clubs for men. Some of these cults and mystery schools are even mentioned in the Bible. Among them were the Magi of the East, who learned from their mysterious order that a great god-king would be born. These Persian magicians watched the heavens for a cosmological sign that would herald the birth of this king. When the heavenly sign appeared in confirmation of the secret teachings, they followed the stars, using the interpretation of the constellations as taught to them by their sect. This ancient astronomy guided them until they arrived at Jerusalem, where they paid a visit to a Roman-installed regional king named Herod to seek more information on the birth of the child. Herod, alarmed at the prospect of a competitor to his throne, requested that once the magicians had located the boy to inform Herod at once. Now, we don't know exactly when the Magi found the home of Jesus, but the Christmas tradition of wise men presenting gifts to the baby in a Bethlehem manger is incorrect. The text states that Mary and Joseph were settled into a home by this time, and that at the time of the visit, the baby was a young child. A more accurate estimate would be that Jesus was between one to two years old at the time of their visit. Knowing that King Herod had ill intent, the magicians did not return and report to him of their discovery. And when Herod realized that he had been fooled by the Magi, he ordered the slaughter of all children in Bethlehem up to two years old in the twisted hope that this would snuff out his new enemy. But Jesus was not in Bethlehem. Following the departure of the Persian Magi of the Eastern Mystery School, Jesus' parents took him and fled to Egypt. When they eventually returned to Canaan, they settled back in the northern village of Nazareth. Nazareth was also home to many members of an ancient mystery sect known as the Essenes. The Essenes also believed in sacred initiations and sacred rites, including the practice of cleansing by full immersion in water. It is likely that the cousin of Jesus, John the Baptizer, was a member of this sect. 
And while Jesus may not himself have been a member, many of the sacred apocalyptic predictions of the Essenes can be seen in some of the teachings of Jesus. This mystery sect is most known for the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were copies of ancient Bible texts that were preserved in clay pots in the caves near Qumran. In fact, in the century after the death of Jesus, as Christianity grew, with it grew Christian-themed mystery schools, and these mystery schools would go on to play a major role in the shroud of power spreading across the continent with the growth of the Catholic Empire. Cults which played significant roles during the period of the Crusades and into the age of medieval times. And that will be the subject of our next episode.